elected chairpersons and uh, I am very thankful to uh, Fox and uh, Dr. Deepa Ganesh. Uh, welcome Archana and uh, we are here to talk on uh, this nascent subject. And uh, with this, uh, we do agree that uh, vaginal laxity, stress urinary incontinence, vaginal dryness, and uh, uh, these uh, genitourinary syndrome of menopause has subordinated our women since ages and never had any concrete medical solution. So today we are here to address these uh, problems of women and uh, their sufferings. The body of evidence about management of pelvic floor disorder continues to grow in the newly board certified subspecialty by now. One is female pelvic medicine and the other is reconstructive surgery. These are all common pelvic floor disorder right from prolapse, urinary dysfunction, sexual dysfunction and overactive bladder. It gives a physical, psychological and social and lifestyle restriction to our women. And this is an exhaustive list of pelvic reconstructive surgery and they have got their gold standard place as well as for all facial and muscular defects, these are only answers. But there is something more than that. And that is because of uh, physiological changes due to pregnancy and childbirth, due to hormonal changes, due to aging and menopause, weight fluctuation, it causes laxity, it devitalizes the vaginal mucosa and it causes a damaged floor. And this result in a term vaginal relaxation syndrome where the vagina loses its optimal vaginal structure and the cause is clear. Now, the patient and her husband, they refer VRS as loose vagina. And what is the impact of that? It is the studies from the pioneer in sex medicines, uh, Master and Johnson, they concluded that friction is a function of vaginal canal and when this virtual space is expanded, it can lead to reduction, delay or absence of orgasm. Then these events often lead to development of genitourinary conditions like SUI, vaginal atrophy, and dryness. And that affects the quality of life, self-confidence, and definitely the sexuality. Now, if we see the incidence, it is higher than the diabetes, depression, and hypertension. Incontinence, the stress urinary incontinence uh, is the, the prevalence wise. It is the most important and prevalent condition as a chronic diseases in women. And it can start from the right from the age of 20, 25 after first childbirth. A small leak can be there and that goes on increasing. And about our 80 to 90 percent of women start suffering by the age of 60 or 70 with mild to moderate SUI. And dear friends, we are all the time talking about infertility, fibroid, this and that, and we are ignoring that what we are offering to these women, 80% of our women population is suffering. So it's the time to indulge in this modality to make them comfortable. This is the hypermobility and uh, mashes and complications are so high and most of these patients after applications of these uh, tapes land into overactive bladder and the learning curve of her average gynecologist is too long to apply these TVTs and it cannot be offered to a mass population of women. GSM being gynecologist, when she's coming again and again, we may we are offering her some cream, some lubricants. At the most, we she comes in infection, we are treating the infection or estrogen creams. But dear friends, I want to tell you that these estrogen cream will only absorb when there is a sufficient amount of vascularity when there is proper pH and when there is a restoration of collagen, then only this preparation will 
act. So we have to think beyond this. Now the gold standard treatment, what we are doing up till now are these and HRT and topical hormones, but there is a boom of energy-based devices and uh, I am going to take on a, a little bit about what are these energy-based devices because there are a lot of confusion amongst gynecologists that they are the same. So just to um, give a little bit idea about these devices. This is a new trend and it is based on the applying of thermal or non-thermal energy to the various lasers, uh, layers of vaginal tissue and they all claim uh, about the collagen contraction, neocollagenogenesis, growth factor infiltration and revitalizing and restoration of elasticity and moisture of the vaginal canal. This is the exhaustive list of uh, available uh, energy-based devices and we'll see one by one. Radio frequency is not a laser. What commonly people think, it is a electromagnetic waves. It is uh, used for vaginal tightening. It is good for vulval and labial contouring if it is a demand, but it is more for cosmetic. It's not for uh, very effective for stress urinary incontinence and it will require a high cost disposable van for uh, radio frequency device. CO2 laser, it works differently. It is very good, but it, the principle of working of CO2 laser is different. It makes a micro ablation into the tissues and it works. So we should be very cautious about using CO2 laser on a very severe cases of GSM already dryness, petechial hemorrhages, carinkle are seen. So it may uh, be a little bit more aggressive. HIFU, again, it is a high focused ultrasound device and HIFU actually uh, can be used for better contouring rather than used in SUI and other type of incontinences. Erbium YAG laser, it is a non-ablative laser, what I am using and uh, had experience of about now four years with uh, uh, this uh, non-ablative laser. It is a train of multiple pulses of high fluence and short duration and it result in non-ablative thermal diffusion and it is the safest. Now a little bit about the laser as we gynecologists are not using lasers and uh, a little bit of uh, to compile our knowledge. Uh, it's uh, light and light has energy. Laser waves uh, actually traverse in a collimated or coherent uh, light. So there will be same valley and same on uh, this thing plateau and they can be focused on a point where the therapy is required. It is the activated uh, photons when we stimulate electrons type of laser depending upon the from where what medium it is passed so if it is a co2 it is a gas in a erbium it is the solid media now what is the action of uh, lasers on the tissue it is the photostimulation photodynamic reaction and photothermolytic action that takes place with the laser now, what is chromophore? Chromophore, like in skin, it is the melanin. And if it is a vascular tree, it is the hemoglobin. So chromophore is a substance which actually absorb laser. So the laser which is decided on which tissue we have to pass that uh, uh, laser beam. So in case of vagina, it is the water which is chromophore. So the laser which is maximally absorbed in water is best to use uh, in the vaginal canal. Now, uh, what actually happens? It is the contraction of collagen and neocollagenogenesis. With the increase of temperature, there is activation of heat shock protein into the tissues and with the transforming growth, factor the 
final result is chemically at least the position of collagen type one issue. It is a collagen type one, which is the best issue, having good elasticity and good uh, tensile strength, and it is the bet better collagen to hold that issue. So there is a conversion of poor collagen to good collagen. So it is uh, actually proved science that laser works in this tissue. And this is a beautiful slide to show you that the temperature which is required for new collagenogenesis is only up to 50 to 60 degree. And after that, it may cause coagulative effect and denaturation of uh, your proteins. So you should choose a laser which is actually giving you temperature between 40 to 60 degree only and that makes it the safest laser so with the, how the mechanism of action is there it, the first phase uh, it is the release of chemical mediators then in the second phase it is the proliferation and in the third phase say after 30 to 40 days there is, there starts a complete remodeling with the mature collagen tissue there is increase in the collagen fibers new collagenogenesis new vascularization there is improved lubrication and good pH. So these lasers are not only for the GSM, a young women who is coming for recurrent infections is having loss of uh, collagen, um, uh, sorry, the glycogen. And secondly, the pH is altered. So a single therapy of these gynecologists can change her life from this recurrent infection and episode of urinary infections. So it is stimulates collagen and it improves uh, and it treats the SUI laxity and dryness. Now about the uh, erbium, it is uh, maximally absorbed and uh, it is the safest one. If we compare the both of the laser, there is the change in the mechanism of action. And this uh, H -B smooth uh, the hyperthermia in the epithelium in labia. And this temperature increase of 60 degree in dermis causes shrinkage in of uh, tissue of the vaginal wall. And say after six months, there is a significant thickening of vaginal wall. Now there are a lot of studies to uh, support this and in this slide we can see the improved uh, collagen tissue which is there after six months this is again to prove that yes it is working it is the vaginal wall mri there is a change in the uv angle intima lace incontilase and renovalase these are the three terms in the same machine intimalase is for vaginal tightening where the patient are having sexual issue mild to moderate degree of prolapse like first and second degree sometimes our hysterectomized patients say the bulge coming from the vaginal wall or they are feeling a dragging sensation like a cystocele rectocele we are offering intimalase it is a mode in the same machine what we are offering and the incontinence is for incontinence of urine, especially the stress incontinence. What we are uh, doing that we are giving uh, laser beams to the anterior channel wall. And when there is a shrinkage of a channel wall, it definitely makes a torn UV angle to its proper side. This is the slide showing how cumbersome to use TVTs and how easy and friendly is the lasers. Renovalase, uh, many of our patients come to us again and again for vulvodynia, vaginal dryness, atrophied vaginitis, and urethral canonical recurrent UTI. If uh, there are variable sizes of uh, these speculum which are available to give intravaginal laser, but if it is not at all possible, a simple 
uh, area of uh, laser treatment outside the uh, vulval area is more than sufficient to make them comfortable in, in subsequent sitting if they are suffering from SUI or other problems of vaginal wall, then only we can offer the intravaginal. This is something boon in my uh, patient. It is the intrasphincteric device. In this last uh, year, we have included in our armamentarium, many of our patients, they stood up from the bed and they say there is a leak of urine. This is due to intrasphincteric uh, deficiency. So now we are offering intrasphincteric trick lasers and they are very very comfortable in even urgent overactive bladder also this is the complete set of treatment which we require for this this is a robotic arm of uh, this uh, laser where we can give accurate delivery and it is a uh, patient friendly and it gives a very shorter treatment time to gynecologist also lot of clinical trials are going going on and uh, around more than six, uh, 60 clinical studies and papers are there in the international journals. They are all reputed journals like climactric and urological journals and uh, so many. This is the exhaustive list of work that is going on with these lasers with the very good results in this direction. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, almost 94% patient reported improvement and uh, more than 68% claim to be free of SUI. And this is for vaginal tightening, uh, uh, one of the Riviera study, Fistonic study. It is a pilot study that show improvement all in all parameter of SUI. And... Uh, there is a one uh, Sarka glue study where the perineometric measurements show increase in all three measured value. Now coming to my own study of uh, this RBM yarn, we have a dedicated center and uh, we have done this much procedures. We are maintaining uh, King's Health Questionnaire for all the patient urinary distress inventory, PAD test, and uh, we are concluding our uh, data uh, before, after, say uh, first sitting, second sitting and third sitting and we are calculating scores out of it. For intimales, we are maintaining uh, uh, female sexual distress and famous female sexual dis uh, inventory. And for renoales or for GSM, it is more wide. We are seeing for vaginal laxity with perineometry, vaginal health index by Batchman vaginal health index and uh, uh, sorry, and uh, we are maintaining uh, uh, this uh, ICQ, ICIQ, like for in, there are patients of incontinence with GSM and FSDS, like female sexual dysfunction scale. So we are calculating all this uh, before, after, and uh, say we are following, uh, taking follow-up since uh, um, after last uh, therapy, one year, two years, something like that. And we are concluding our own study. This is something not uh, related to lasers, but you friends must be thinking that how uh, all collagen tissue can help into the uh, improvement of muscular tissue. So it is uh, electromagnetic chairs uh, we, we are offering in conjunction with laser to many of the patients of urge incontinence, overactive bladder, and uh, for um, uh, pelvic rehabilitation, it is a programmed Kegel exerciser. So both of the uh, modalities like lasers and uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, stimulator, the results are tremendously good. And this is um, our own uh, patient of incontilase, intimalase, and renovalase. So in incontilase, our, uh, in our study, it is the satisfaction rate is almost 80%. If it is done with uh, uh, chair setting, then the results are 98% and uh, 28 patients, 73%. And uh, if there is only one sitting, so it is the results are 22 30% improvement in their problem. So it is, you can see there is a definite drop in the uh, results of, uh, of lasers in terms of King Health Questionnaire. 
and uh, in same way renewal is 70% was the satisfaction rate and there is a uh, improvement in all type of parameters especially the vaginal health index score and intimal is again the satisfaction is more than 90% because they are the young patients who wanted tightening for sexual dysfunction or fraud for their uh, utero cervical descent or after hysterectomy and uh, there is a definite improvement in vrs and the number of satisfied patients are almost 90 to 100 patients so this is the list of uh, the procedure offered with the lasers even if you make it in smooth mode you can uh use lasers in these indication there are a lot of testimonials which are there with the, these lasers and uh, i think uh, uh, we sh all should uh, indulge in this type of modalities where our more than 80% of women population is suffering thank you very much thank you madam for that uh, uh, I have a question. When we uh, do this laser therapy for stress urinary incontinence, how soon is the patient able to appreciate results? And whether we need to, you know, if the patient has any comorbidities like obesity or anything that's going to increase our intra-abdominal pressure, that's going to reduce the success rate of laser, how do we counsel the patients to come for multiple visits to see if the results are adequate? Yeah, the... Uh, results from the uh, first therapy say it is around uh, for more than 45 days when the remodeling starts then the patient starts feeling better if it is a young patient already collagen is not so much damaged so these are the women who come first with the uh, showing a better result and uh, uh, very old women may have a, a component of urge and overactive also so they they should be kept um, on some drug therapy after laser to make them more comfortable because laser cannot treat urge and overactive. But if we use laser as well as pharma therapy, then they, they may come to us, uh, say, after one month that they are very happy. And say, after th second and third sitting, the success rate goes on and on up to 90% in young patient and 70% in old women. And uh, say if it is a moribundly obese patient, the collagenogenesis will be same to all. And uh, morbidly, uh, this when there is a morbid obesity or medical disorder, laser is a boon for these patients because for TVT, she has to wait for so many long months for fitness to the surgery and finally, uh, she has to uh, be, uh, she goes into overactive bladder after applying these uh, mashes. So this is actually a boon for these type of women where no need to make them, say, more uh, medically fit or obese, obese women. After control of diabetes, you can offer laser, but you cannot offer surgery to these patients. Vidya, ma'am. It was a very enlightening talk on this uh, topic because most of uh, gynecologists were not aware of this topic. Uh, yes. It is very enlightening for us. Uh, I want to ask how successful uh, is this treatment for a post It is very, very very uh, useful in postmenopausal women because I told you in one of my slides uh, being gynecologists when they come for the first time they, we are having so many things our, in, in our basket. We are offering them moisturizer, we are getting urine culture done if it is mostly it is possible uh, positive. We are happy that we will give antibiotic and she will be settled. When she come for the second time we are offering almost the same treatment or when she is coming for the third time we are referring to urosurgeon or some for some better drug therapy and finally we are losing them and giving them estrogen cream again and again it is their ph it is their glycogen it is their poor tissues 
so they are they show wonderful result the in gsm very very old patient even is very happy after that and after that we can keep them on estrogen therapy and they are settled for a very long time or we can give a touch up setting after one year or two year to this type of women thank you madam so